Good evening, everyone. It is six o'clock, so we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. We'll begin with roll call. Yes, uh, right here. Brett. Back, back and Stokes. Here. Peterson. Here. Lucas. Here. Lee. Here. Carmen. Here. Weaver. Here. Here. A current copy of the Open Meetings Act of Nebraska is posted on the wall at the back of the council chambers. Uh, before we before we head on into item number two, I believe Jim would like to say a few words before we get started. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, yeah, I would just like to say a couple of things. I'd like to uh, extend a special thanks to the people we have sitting here, our department heads. Uh, for all the work that they've done working with us this year on our budget. Uh, you know, as is usually the case, we were not able to meet all the needs of the various departments, but we all have worked together to come up with a budget that I think uh, will work for the city here this next year. We're also very cognizant of the fact that whenever we put these budgets together, uh, we think about those who we are asking to pay their taxes, their rates, their fees to us, and these other uh, various things uh, we always take that into consideration in what we ask for from our people and i would remind everybody that we have not changed the mill levy since the 2016 2017 budget it's always been the same and in looking at some of the articles in the newspaper i would say that again the city is probably taking one of the smallest increases in in property tax asking of the various tax asking entities here within the community. Uh, <clears throat> I'd also like to say a special thanks to Dawn. Uh, her and I work very closely during this time and she's the one who puts all the material together that we use during this budget process. And she does an excellent job for us on that. So again, Dawn, thank you very much. We're now at a point where we need to approve the appropriations for the coming year. <clears throat> and one of the things that we always have to ask at this meeting is, is that the council will suspend the rules. I know that uh, sometimes it's hard to do, uh, but to save us uh, the time that will be needed to be able to submit the budget to the state and to put it in place by the 1st of October, uh, we do need to ask that the council suspend the rules. And again, that is uh, pretty much the same thing that we've asked uh, every year of the council. Uh, we're also at a point where the council can deliberate on the approval of the budget for the next year and make any comments that they'd like to make on the budget. I would only ask that if we're gonna do that, that we take into consideration the overall effect that may have on the budget by making any kind of recommendations. Uh, if we make recommendations that show the, that change the bottom line, uh, then what we're uh, forced to do is to uh, republish and come back and go through at least a portion of the same process uh, that we've already been through with this. So again, uh, you know, uh, if you have an idea, if you wanna make a change, uh, you know, uh, let's visit about it and get it out because tonight is the council's opportunity uh, to visit amongst themselves on where they want to go with this budget. Um, the other thing I would say is, is that we had the public hearing the other night. Uh, the mayor gave everybody an opportunity to get up and speak their piece. Uh, so the council hopefully has had an opportunity to think about that a little bit. And we appreciate the public being here and having the input uh, that they have. Uh, and again, in closing then, uh, I would just like to say that we always take into consideration the, the constituents. And that's why we haven't raised the mill levy. Uh, for every dollar in value, we're still only asking you to pay the same amount uh, of tax dollars on those uh, dollars. Uh, and again, we're coming in with a very slight increase in the overall budget, uh, but a lot of that is thanks to these people that you're seeing out here and us working together uh, as a, a family uh, to be able to put this budget together in respect to constituents of our community. So with that, Mayor, I, I appreciate the time. Thank you. 
Thank you, Jim. Uh, I would also like to just echo what Jim just stated to the department heads. You're amazing people, and thank you very, very much. I know you put in a lot of hours, and uh, I'm sure there was probably some sleepless nights. So I truly do appreciate everything that you did, and especially Dawn. I know she put in a great deal of hours as well, and Jim, I know he definitely had some sleepless nights as well. So I thank each and every one of you, and, and, and uh, so we'll just go ahead and move forward here. So we'll go to, on to item number two which is action on ordinance number 4014 to adopt the budget statement and to appropriate city monies for the fiscal year 2019 and 2020. I move that we suspend. In order to the mayor and city council of the city of North Platte, Link County, Nebraska, to adopt the budget statement to be termed the, the annual appropriation bill, to appropriate some for necessary expenses and liabilities, repealing all ordinances or parts of ordinances in conflict herewith, providing for the effective date and publication thereof. I move that we suspend the rules requiring three separate readings on ordinance number 4014. Second. Just to clarify, this is just, just the suspension of the rules, correct? Yes. Uh, not all the names yet. I guess I have a question about. Oh, about just a moment, Ed. You need to, or I'm sorry, uh, Lawrence. Oh, no, you haven't voted. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, regarding the suspension, uh, I, I take it that the reason we're being asked to suspend the rules is just because of time? Yes, that's correct, Ted. Is there any reason why we can't begin this process earlier so we have an opportunity to? Uh, deliberate a little more on this process and therefore thereby uh, maybe make some cogent recommendations to consider as a council we could do that Ed one of the problems we have though is is that uh, the county is not required to certify the valuations to us until August 20th uh, we could move it up but we would be basing it on uh, longer projections, if you will, from the departments on what they're thinking they're going to end up with. And then again, the county assessor is not required to give us the certified valuations until almost the end of the process we're already in. So, uh, you know, and I guess really that would be up to the mayor to make a decision if he wanted to start the process earlier, uh, we could. I guess from my perspective, I think that would be very beneficial. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of a, a newbie here, I guess. I, there's a lot of this stuff that I really don't understand. I'm beginning to understand it better. And um, I think, I think uh, at least from my perspective, to have a little more time, even though knowing full well there may be some modifications in the final budget, uh, to have a little more time to think about it, to discuss it with other people, uh, and maybe come up with some ideas or recommendations or thoughts on, on how we can make the budget uh, uh, a little, uh, streamline the budget maybe a little bit, maybe move some monies here or there uh, to accommodate some of, the, some of the more pressing needs of the community. So I, I guess I throw that out as, as a request for next year that we certainly take that into consideration that uh, maybe instead of waiting uh, to, to review the budget until we have to suspend the rules, that we have a little more time to be able to review this, even with the understanding that it may have to be adjusted. Sure. Thank you. And that motion passes. Item number three, action to adopt. Oh, sorry. I was... I got, I got excited there. <laughs> I move that we adopt ordinance number 4014 to uh, this budget statement and to appropriate city monies for fiscal year 2019-2020. There's an item I'd like to have a little discussion on, please, if that's okay. Sure. Mayor. Yeah, absolutely. The, and I think this is mostly an accounting item. If you, if you reference the the golf course fund accounting we have a there's a contingency item outline um, 48 48 and there's a contingency item in the golf course fund of hundred ninety seven thousand one hundred sixty five dollars which 
which inflates the expenditure the expenditure budget for the golf course which then I think appears for somebody who hasn't spent a lot of time looking at it or understanding it that our expenditure budget is increased at the golf course I think from an operating um, standpoint that's not the case but that provides an optic that that's what's occurring and so what 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 I'd like to look at and I think this could be done without a net alteration in the overall budget that would create a processing a process issue is to determine and I'll defer to Jim to maybe walk through how we could do this but if we could get that contingency item pulled out of the golf course fund expenditure and over to the general fund contingency and keep that out of the I think we would have a budget that would be less likely to be misinterpreted by by outside readers could yeah, you come on that Jim Ty, I agree with that. Uh, again, that has to do with the transfer uh, and the overage and, and a potential shortfall this year. But uh, the way to do that, in my opinion, would be that we pull $200,000 just so we can keep it in rough for round numbers. And if you would amend the budget ordinance to say that you want $200,000 out of the contingency on the golf course fund to be moved to the contingency on the general fund. And I think that would take care of that issue. And I agree with you, that would be a better reflection of what the actual expenses are out there. Okay. Okay. And to make sure I understand that right, the, that transfer, we're, we're, we're kind of mopping up the prior year's um, operating shortfalls that 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 needed to be transferred at some point but this also then covers us for what we expect from an operating shortfall for the next cycle right that that's okay. correct okay that's fine I, I guess I would just uh, I guess one more question does that affect then the the technical transfer on the 3.25 does that does that alter anything with that or is it just it's just the allocation of that transfer? it's just the allocation of that okay. transfer okay well, I hope I'm going to do this right, but I'd just like to to make a motion to amend the budget with a uh, $200,000 uh, alteration of the contingency in the golf course expenditures uh, to the general fund. Sorry. And then we'll, we'll just be voting on the amendment then is yeah. to clarify. Yes. Okay. And that motion passes. And now the main the main motion is on the floor now. So as amended. As yes, as, as amended. amended. I guess I I uh, don't want to make a motion, but I would like to make a comment. Um, when I think about government, especially city government. Um, I think there's probably three, maybe four basic things that government needs to do. Uh, one is police protection, one is fire protection, one is streets and highways, and then finally utilities, which would include water and sewer. Um, when I look at our expenditures, um, let me look at the notes here that I made. We've, we've increased our police costs, we've increased our fire costs, we've increased our public service costs, but very to a very minor extent. And if I'm understanding correctly, public services would include the streets. Now, recreation went up and public transit went up a lot, quite frankly. And then the library went up. When I think about the basic duties of government, I, I really don't see that recreation, public transit, or the library fall into the basic duties of government. I, I don't understand that that is part of a basic governmental function. So I'm a bit confused when I think everyone in this room 
certainly my constituents would agree that our streets are in bad need of repair in our community even to the point that I've been told that uh, some streets are are getting to the point uh, where no it's no longer a repair issue it's a replacement issue and I'm, I'm confused I guess why if the basic functions of government that I outlined are in fact the basic government functions why we aren't looking to reduce some of these other non-essential government functions to correct the deficiency in our street department by moving some of those other funds into the public service department that's a question that I throw out there I'm not going to make an amendment or, or try to change the budget but but I think this is uh, I, I think maybe at least from my perspective um, this is not what I understand the purview of government to be one of the government functions to be and and I guess thinking maybe a little bit ahead um, I would, I would like to see us as as a council with certainly the support of the mayor and and mr. Hawks uh, put together some kind of a committee whereby we could start looking at some of these budget items and and maybe offer some suggestions with the support of the department heads on how we can start shrinking some budgets at the same time increasing the basic function of government budget and that that would be my suggestion for for the upcoming year um, one one of the comments <laughs> golf course is still number one um, but streets certainly come in as a number two and uh, when I look at our expenditures um, it, it doesn't make sense to me why the repair of the streets seems to be getting short shrift so I, I just wanted to make that comment throw it out and and maybe consider uh, as a council that we put together some type of a committee to to review some of these budget items for next year thank you Ed, you were friends I respectfully disagree with you another thing the government the government has to do is the welfare of the people and the reason we have transportation in this town is because they can't afford to go to doctor's appointments uh, they can't afford to have a car to me that is a vital function to make a community <clears throat> there are poor people in this town and I don't think that this is dollars and cents issues it's people issues and I you know I uh, I just have to disagree with you poor kids need recreation <clears throat> people need transportation and and uh, that is a vital vital function of government in this country historically it's been that way we used to have a bus service in North Platte when I was a kid here in North, those yellow buses, anybody remember that? Yep. Uh, <clears throat> you know, this part of the government function. But, you know, you, we're friends, and I'm not arguing with you, and I think you're right. You know, we have to look at Iron Eagle. We have to look at the budget. But I disagree that we're just confined to those areas. The welfare of the people is just as important as those other things. And that's just my opinion on this. Thank you. Yes, sir? I agree fundamentally with what Mr. Reeker said, but I can also appreciate that I think there are other things except uh, aside from the essential functions that Mr. Reeker has identified that are worth doing. So I guess I kind of agree with both of you to a certain extent. Makes perfect sense to me. So anyway, that's my comment. Well, if we're just discussing this, if you take away the library, you take away Cody Park, you take away the ball field, you take away most of the recreation, then who supplies that for a city? Because as far as I'm concerned, that's part of a city function. That's why we are a city, because we can supply those things for the people that live here. So then who takes care of that if it isn't the city? I don't think I meant to imply, uh, Glenn, that these services would be eliminated but I think that we need to take a hard look at how we're spending our money to make sure that we're spending it on the functions of government and and to mr. Nisley's concern and we certainly are friends and I respect that very much 
Um, I think I think we've gotten ourselves in a pickle, quite frankly. Um, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm, I'm a Christian. I, I want to live my life as a Christian. I, I strive to live my life as a Christian. I don't do a very good job most days. But I think part of my duty as a Christian is to help my fellow man. So if my neighbor needs a ride to the doctor, it's my job to help that neighbor get to the doctor. Uh, sometimes it's a huge inconvenience. Sometimes I'm not able to do it. But I don't know that it's entirely proper for me to put my responsibility, what I view as my responsibility, on, on somebody else's shoulders. And, and I'm just going to leave it at that. Just got a couple comments on this and a, a short prepared statement that won't take too long. Um, I, w I think our city is in a difficult position and the street budget becomes, be, really becomes the, 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 the place where it gets most affected as you go down the line because we're, we're not naturally growing and we can, we can discuss like we did the other night, we had great discussions on a future development, and, and Gary and the chamber, their crew are working. We're, we've got a lot of great efforts out for growth, but it's difficult when you're in our size of community location. In today's world, growth is just difficult. We could we could grow our way out of this problem, but it's but it's hard. We got to stay focused on that. To me, that's objective number one. But this golf course issue, I've become passionate about. I think I've told a number of people. I'm not even really passionate about what we do as a community about it, keeping it or not keeping it. I'm passionate about us making a decision and dealing with this. This can has been kicked down the road so many times it's ridiculous. Bill and the staff out at Iron Eagle are doing a great job. I have no criticisms with the, the job that our, our, our city employees are doing with the golf course. I have a criticism about the way that this council is continually ignoring the public sediment on it. and. The negativity and the distrust of city government that is occurring as a result of that is becoming costly. And I could make an argument that that's what's costing us the money that needs to go into the roads fund. We, last year there was a sales tax initiative that was presented that would have significantly funded our infrastructure needs. And the neat part of that sales tax would have been that all of us who live here would have paid it, but the citizens in the county would have also paid it who come to North Platte, and all the travelers on I-80 who stopped here would have paid it. So it was a revenue source that would have grown that wouldn't have just been the citizens of North Platte, but when the people using North Platte. And so we, to me, we've got to get focused on getting this negativity issue solved so we can then start to create revenue sources and gain citizen support on it. So with that, I'm just going to read a quick prepared statement, and I'll be done. Uh, Mayor Livingston. Many citizens of North Platte desire to have an election so our voters can make a determination on the city's future commitment to fund and operate Iron Eagle Golf Course. This council's historic resistance to face this ongoing public sediment has resulted in significant negativity and distrust to city government in our community. I've made numerous requests to bring this matter before the city council to consider whether a special election should be held. I've also expended a significant amount of time and research in developing a proposed ballot question. You opted to ignore my request for this matter to come from before this council. I'm very appreciative of the efforts of the city department managers have made to complete this budget with no increases in tax rates. However, I cannot in good faith to the citizens in my ward vote in favor of the proposed budget that continues to fund Iron Eagle without this council having proper venue to consider whether this community should hold a special election on this matter or not. If you will promise to put this matter on the City Council agenda within the next two months, I will vote in favor of the proposed budget. If you will not agree to add this item to the Council agenda in the next two months, I will vote against this proposed budget. Thank you. Thank you. Here's this for the record, Don. Jim? Very well put. And I would just, you know, everything he just said. Can you I'd turn like on the microphone, please? What I'd like to add. A little bit. You know, I think a special election should take place, and I agree. I agree totally with that. And I think we'd be remiss if we didn't accept the responsibility to do just that. 
through the mayor's put, putting this on our agenda. But to me, that would be plan B, because I think plan A is for us to take our responsibility in stewardship and take care of this problem right here. Now, I think there's, I think there's a future for golf out there. But I would see it perhaps not the kind of golf we're used to, or perhaps, perhaps nine holes instead of 18, golf on the high ground and let the frogs have the low ground would be my thought. But I think that what we, we need to do in order to make that happen, and I think it would please the developer and a lot of our citizens if we would make, make that happen, and I think it could happen. There could still be some golf going on out there, but I think the first thing that has to happen as a, pre a precondition of that is that I think we need to stop tax funding of Iron Eagle. And we could do that right here uh, if we chose to. I think we're going to see a petition, whether the mayor puts it on the agenda or not. That would be my take on it. But I think it's our responsibility. And I would like to see us handle it right here at this table and make a, make a decision that takes into consideration our taxpayers. Because I think they've been pushed to the rear of this. And an old woman the other night said exactly that. She said, we come before you all the time and, and, and make, make, uh, make our, our thoughts known. And time after time, we just feel like we're being ignored. And she didn't say stonewalled, but that would be what I would call it. And I think she hit the nail right on the head. So. Personally, I think that we have the ability to, to, I thought we'd probably be talking about golf later in this discussion, but now that we're, we start talking about it, I may as well have, I figured I may as well make my comment too. So I would just like to see us stop this nonsense. And I think the developer would be tickled if we did so that we could make efforts toward getting some private ownership in there to find a viable solution so we can still have some golf and we can, we can, be responsive to our citizens at the same time. Thank you. All right. So I guess it's time, my time to chime in. I think everybody else has chimed in now, except, well, no, Lawrence. Lawrence is still out. I got his time. So, um, no, Iron Eagle bothers me a lot just because of the red ink side of it. And I'm not sure that abandonment or closing is actually going to save the city any money. I'm just doing rough estimates and myself. But I would like to see one first, I guess, what those would be. To me, a mowing crew to go out there and handle that and keep it presentable for our developer, as he requested that it would happen, would be just as expensive as keeping Iron Eagle open. But um, I guess I would be interested to see if we could put together, you know, I, I just think a crew and everything like that would, you know, it would be interesting, especially if, you know, Ty wants to keep going on the election side here. You know, we need to make sure we have all the information. Another thing is I think it, it would behoove us to look to see if there's a partner out there that we could send an RFP to lease it out to long term or um, look at the possibility of sales and, um, and, and see what else is out there. You know, I, I think that the golf course could be successful. And I say that hesitantly. The only reasons why is in respect to the Telegraph's article um, about rivers, um, I believe Colorado is doing their due diligence to control the South Platte River a lot more in the future. Um, so I think the flooding opportunities will be less, but I believe the political toxicity that exists surrounding Iron Eagle will never, I mean, it, it's going to inhibit that location until the city is not the main care handler for it. So I think if, if there's a, you know, a group of five or six people that want to come together and, you know, they're like, you know, we really like golf and this is something we'd like to do. Let's put together a proposal. We hear that there's one available in North Platte or that, you know, maybe there's another existing golf course in the area that, but you know what, I think if we did this together and stuff like that, we might be able to make it work. Or I think it would be smart to look at least to see what's out there. And if there's no viable person or entity to work with, then um, we can go from there. But that's something that I would really like I guess see is if that is possible. If there is a partner out there that would be willing to look at a long-term lease or 
maybe a sale. I don't know if we can even go down that road, but um, something that would allow us to take it out of the political arena and allow, I guess, the investment, I'll call it an investment, that the people of North Platte have put in there, um, a very significant investment in a golf course, um, but to allow it to live, to allow the golfers to have their time, but it to be taken out of the political arena and essentially not our problem and um, to allow it to succeed. I mean, I ran numbers on what golf courses are costing and if, you know, what you were telling me, you know, that the objective originally of it was to have a cheap, affordable golfing. I think it's a mixed bag on that front. Um, it's right there with, uh, in, uh, with the lake in terms of cost, you know, I mean, they're within $25 of each other for a year membership. So that's, that's pretty good. I mean, it's way cheaper. Both are way cheaper than River's Edge. When I called out there, I happened to call out to Kearney. They were charging 6.45 a year, which is cheaper than Iron Eagle, but not by much. 4.50 and 8.50.66. Um, I called Scotts Bluff, 4.80, 5.62 and 25 cents. I called Columbus though, and uh, this is one that really surprised me. It was Columbus and Norfolk. You were talking in the $900 to $1,200 range to play golf for a year and a membership. Um, so I call it a mixed bag in terms of trying to keep affordable. If that was our goal was to keep it affordable, I think, one, we already have that option here available in town um, at this present point with the lake, um, and not to mention Indian Meadows, but that's only nine holes, so I'm kind of excluding that because it's just different. People that want to play 18, play 18. They don't play nine. Um, if people want to play nine, play nine. But um, you know, further east you go, it seems to be more expensive. Further west you go, it seems to be cheaper to play golf. And uh, oh, and I looked at um, Gothenburg at Wild Horse, and it was uh, five twenty-seven fifty <coughs> to play golf out there for a year. Um, so, in terms of being cheaper, I don't know. I think it's a mixed bag in terms of our ability to keep it cheaper. But um, I, I think it would be the best find the best responsibility to the people to look to see what all options we have out there. And that includes seeing if there's a group or an entity that would mind getting into the golf game and could take it off of our hands. Just to add to what you had to say there, uh, Andrew, if I may say, part of this is the future too. And what concerns me, if we, if we keep the golf course or we get somebody to buy the golf course, and I don't know if we could feasibly do that with Chase got his hands on it, but my point is, Mr. Skinner's only got, Indian Meadows is only going to be around for another two, I hate to even say that because I really respect that man. But you know, that's not going to be open much longer. So where are those golfers going to go? All right, which is only going to help the other three courses or one or the other, whatever it might be. My concern is if, if for some reason River's Edge can't make it and they shut their doors and Mr. Skinner's can't do it no more. So his daughter sells it to a, a developer, per se. And well, now we're down to, and we decide to hang up the golf course business. We're down to one golf course. That concerns me down the road. And the other thing is um, the individuals that play at Iron Eagle, I don't know where they came from, but I don't foresee them like you said, that they won't go to River's Edge and play if we close our cars down. So it's not going to help them out financially. The lake, from what I understand, and Ty, you can, I don't know if you play out there or not. Do you play golf? Yeah. I play okay. Golf. I love to play uh, golf. Um, from what I hear from individuals, they don't, they're pretty much full. They don't want any more golf. Am I incorrect? Yeah, I'm, I'm not on the board out there, but what I hear from board members is that financially things are difficult out there um, because I think they feel like are they're limited on what they can charge because of the municipal competition and that um, I think they 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 struggle to get by but they get by and they have a lot of a lot of play but yes it, it is known to be busier and I think there are people that choose not to play at the lake because of how yeah, of how yeah of how busy that course is at, at, at certain times of day and 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 I would tell you guys this is why I keep feeling like we need to get this to the voters you know the voters can have the same information we have about this golf course they they might want to keep it and then we know what to do because Jim's right 
leasing this golf course or selling the golf course to others could have bad consequences. That is not a forever answer no. because, I, I mean, golf course managers are very volatile by nature in today's world <coughs> because the golf business is tough. And so the reason I keep coming back and the reason you guys are all tired of me touting special election is, is because I think we, our voters with all information, as every bit of information I or you have, should make this ultimate long, longer term decision for us because they both have consequences, you know, good and bad. They both have pros and cons. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like this council keeps thinking that, well, we just have the greater good of the community in our interests and we just know more about it than everybody else does. So gosh darn it, we should just deal with this. I think it should go to the voters with the same information and let this community make this decision and rebuild the trust in this government. Our mayor and Mr. Hawks and the staff in this city get way more criticism than they deserve, in my opinion. And I think a lot of that is on this council for not, for not addressing Iron Eagle head on over the years. I really believe that. Here's another concern of mine, that if we open up this door and allow for a special election, because a group, a citizen group, of people that are concerned about Iron Eagle. What's next? If we're going to have another concerned citizen group that wants to get rid of the library and then we've opened the door for special elections, so we're going to allow them to then close the library down. Are we going to, the recreational department, they're losing 800 some thousand dollars a year. Are we going to have a special group of people come in here and go, well, you allowed it for Iron Eagle and they voted it down. I'm just, yeah. saying would that happen I don't know but I think we'd be opening up Pandora's box if I, if I could make just take this a little bit of a, a different direction talking to some of the golfers and I'm not a golfer uh, one of the things that really gets them out there is that uh, they have green fees and they have an annual fee and then we're offering a discount to pay that annual fee um, early in the year which I understand but that's six in the craw of the other people. I think that we need to look at, quite frankly, even if we said we're gonna shut down Iron Eagle, this is, this is gonna be a couple year process anyway. I'm just telling you to do it prudently. Uh, you know, I would say that what I'd like to see is some concrete action, and I've been advocating this, is number one, we're gonna start no discount on your green fees, guys. I mean, on your annual fees. If you wanna golf Iron Eagle, God bless you, we want you, but you know, uh, there's some political issues with that. Uh, the second thing I think Andrew talked about is green fees. I don't think we're way out of line, but I don't think we ought to be undercutting people. I think that gets to them too. I mean, yes. uh, they, they have to, you know, they're paying real yes. estate taxes and Iron Eagle is not. And, uh, you know, we have to make sure our green fees are undercut, undercutting those other people. Um, and uh, because it is government subsidized. And the other thing that I've talked about is we have the issue with the, with the family, the Chase family. I think we got to work to get a quit claim deed on that. If we're not going to get any resolution on that, uh, in the next year, I'm going to reconsider my position on uh, Iron Eagle. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I'm tired of hearing that, well, the, the chases will get it back or whatever. I want a resolution of that. And I'm telling you right now, if we don't get a resolution here or on the road to doing that, I'm going to reconsider my position on Iron Eagle. Um, the last thing I'm going to say is, you know, <laughs> And I've been around golfers my whole life. I was in the legal profession. It, golfers are interesting guys, and there's a social issue. You know, if you close down Iron Eagle, they're, they're not going to go out to a River's Edge. They may not go out to Iron Eagle. You know, uh, they'll be go to Sutherland or someplace else. I don't think that closing down Iron Eagle solves the basic problem with golfing that they have right now as an industry. I'm just being honest with you. If I honestly felt that, we could shut this thing down, but I don't think that really is the answer. I think what we need to do, we have a responsibility. The, the city of North Platte, rightly or wrongly, has invested a heck of a lot of money in this thing, and I'm not, I don't want to go out and do it cheap uh, because that affects the taxpayers, and, and I think we have a responsibility on that issue, and that's all I'm going to say about it, guys. Uh, but I, we're not ignoring this issue. Um, but I think we need to start taking some concrete action, know and let the public know that we're dealing with this issue. And if three years down the line it means closing Iron Eagle, then that's what we need to do. But that's why I'm a little bit opposed to a, a vote on this issue now. Give us a chance to work on it. You know, I'm serious about that. We, we're not even one year out paying all the debt off. 
Yes. Uh, you know, give us a chance. I mean, you, I hope you have some respect for us. Uh, let's work it out. I, you know, that's all I'm trying to say. I don't make any glowing promises, but I, I think a, a, this this issue of putting the vote on it just it's an aggravation. Um, uh, you know, and every council member here, what's the one thing you're sick and tired of hearing about? Iron Eagle. You know, and I, I invite you to complain, but Rich, I, I don't, I'm not complaining about you. I mean, anybody could have right to complain to us, but we've heard a lot about this. And we're not, I, I'm not, this isn't a deal because I love Iron Eagle and I want to keep it around forever. That's not the deal. I want to work out a solution that's best for the city of North Platte. And I'll keep my big mouth shut. <laughs> well, we've gone for a year and a half now, or for a little over a year. And I don't see where one bit of difference. Well, I have a bit to say. Do I get a turn here? <laughs> you gonna talk? Well, in fact, I got a lot to say right at the moment. First of all, I did not ignore you, and you know that. That was not ignored. You know that this discussion has been going on for quite some time. Um, I spoke to you and three others in, in a meeting. You knew what was going on and you were informed what, why we're not bringing it forward. So don't say I ignored you. No, that did not happen. You have to forget there's other council members here. It's just not you. I talked to each and every one of them to determine if they wanted to go that route. And you knew that, that you did not have the votes to get it in here to that. So I, would, I just want to say that. Now I want to talk about Iron Eagle a little bit. I don't, I don't think y'all, I don't think you need to list, um, give me a history lesson on, on the Iron Eagle. We all know it's been around, what, 25 years? And I don't think there's been a year since that happened that someone on this council hadn't complained about Iron Eagle. So there's been a split for 25 years, got 50, I don't even know what it is, 50-50 probably? Now, the other night, I just want to share, and then I'll keep quiet here for a little bit, but the other night, uh, Tuesday, we had a work session. And, um, this group came in and I'm thankful for that they came in and let you know what's going on out there in that vicinity. I've been in talks, not me personally, but I know Jim has been in talks for probably a year. Has it been a year? I lose track of time, quite honestly. And we've, need, we've had, had to keep that quiet because it, it depended on that in order for these groups to come forward to do what they wanted to get accomplished out in this particular area. And they came forward the other night and explained to each one of you what that process was going to be. And um, it's a little tough for me to ignore that because we have an opportunity here in North Platte, not only the $10 million that we voted on the other night, but probably up in the $40 million range. And it, in the talks that we had in the past year was dependent upon the golf course being there. Now, you can all argue about that. You don't need the golf course. But I'm listening to the people that know about their business. They're successful in what they have done. And if they tell me that this, this uh, opportunity is to have that golf course there and move forward with what they wanted to do, I'm going to listen to them. And I have been listening to them for eight months. And I've, I've got to tell you, we've been talking to them for that probably amount of time to come to this council and talk to you all so you'd get off of me. But I've had to be quiet about it. But I did explain that to a couple of you, or probably more than that, that this process was take, being taken into consideration, and I needed them just to, you know, give me a, give me a chance. Now, during those conversations, not only um, this chief, uh, we talked to them many times, but we also talked to some individuals that are interested in taking over the golf course. Now, unfortunately, when you keep talking about the golf course, how, how, do, how can you be successful in enticing somebody to come here and take that over if you continually slam the golf course? They know what's going on. We get calls 10 minutes after these meetings to say, what in the world are y'all doing? It's a little hard to explain that when I know that we may have an opportunity to have $40 million project come to North Platte, and believe me, we need that. We truly do need that. So. And also that meeting that night, not just uh, Chief, but there's an individual from, um, I don't want to give his name, well, you all know who it was. We had a part two of that, that particular meeting. And I'm still a little bit disturbed about that. We had an individual here that is promoting 
um, what's that golf course out, out here? Um, River's Edge. They have a private roadway that goes through there and he's asking for us to pay for, what, quarter million dollars to fix a road that's, that's on private property? Yes. And what I heard that night, I want them, to, first of all, let me tell you this, I want them to be successful. I want everybody in business here in town to be successful. And I've said that all along. And until this council, or who's ever sitting here, can understand that we need to support all the businesses here in town. We need to support everything that we got going in, in North Platte, not only our, our administration here, our different departments. If we can't support what we have here, how in the world can we entice somebody to come to North Platte if they see what we're doing right here? It's, it's tough, I'm telling you. And I've been talking to these people for eight months, or longer, probably longer. So this gentleman gets up here, and I, I don't have a problem with that. I want him to be successful and that group to be successful. The thing that bothered me the most is that, well, it didn't bother me. This council, this group, I don't know how many of you spoke, and you were trying to find solutions to help this person, which, you know, you should do. Why are we not doing with it, finding solutions for what we have that we need to be taken care of? If we'd all get together and figure out a solution to what we already have, instead of bickering about it every year at budget time, we, that the Iron Eagle would be successful. I know that. But how in the world do you be successful if you're being told you're going to close up the next year or trying to close the next year? It makes it pretty tough. And in, in, in all honesty, that group is doing a really good job out there. They're working their hind ends off to make that a, a, a good golf, well, it is a good golf course. So they work really hard at doing that. Um, I don't know where I'm going with all that, but I just, I just, I wanted to share it. In the end of that meeting where, where um, Mr. Richards was here and requesting information or even help to take care of that private, and I don't have a problem with that. I don't think we should be doing it. I never thought we should start in taking care of private property, and I think you all said that. I think it, most of you agreed with that. The problem I had with the end of that conversation was he started slamming Iron Eagle, and these people sitting in here laughing about it. That bothered me. What we should be doing is trying to find a solution to make Iron Eagle a viable place in, in, in a workable area. That's what we do. How can we help this guy find a solution to what his problem is and he won't do it for our, our own? So I just, I needed to say that. Now, we're still in negotiations with an individual to take over the, the golf course. I hope that he does. That would solve a lot of the problems that we're talking here tonight. But it's pretty darn hard to, to uh, talk him into taking this golf course if we're gonna sit around here and tell you what a bad place it is. Well, you didn't quite say that. But, so the discussions has been hurting, those discussions in the background, and unfortunately I was never been able to say anything about it until Chief came forward and let you know what was going on. So anyway, that, that's my sp spiel on this. We just need to work together find solutions to make these things work, and we'll all be better off for it. This city will be better off for it. Now, I'm not one that wants to close golf course at this point in time from what the discussions I've had over the past year. And I think it's important that we make sure, or at least, I know some of you voted against it beyond my disbelief. Are you voting against the golf course or were you voting against chief industries and not thinking that they're gonna be able to do what they say they are? They're a well-qualified, group of people that have done well across the state of Nebraska. They're willing to take a risk and come to North Platte, Nebraska and spend their money with a $10 million project and maybe 20 to 30 more million dollars on this other area. I, for one, would like to see that happen. We need it here in North Platte, and if they get that done, I can guarantee you that there'll be more, more businesses coming into that area. It's just gonna happen, they'll just follow them right in. It's going on in Grand Island, he's doing it in Lincoln and wherever else in the state of Nebraska. They're really good people. So I don't want to mess that up, and I certainly don't want to mess it up because of the golf course. Anyway, all right, I'm done. Well put, well put. Find a solution. Mr. And I'm certainly not ignoring anybody. Never have, never will. And I've talked to everyone, I don't even, I can't even tell you how many people I've talked to until I'm blue in the face. But I will take every phone call that I ever get, 
And if I'm not home when they make a phone call, I call them back. I just got one uh, last night, a, real, a very nice gentleman. I don't get the phone calls that you get, Ty. I don't get the, the ones that I've talked to tell me that they, they hope that they see the golf course continue. I got stopped in Lincoln at a shoe store in Lincoln, Nebraska to tell me that they hope that the golf course continues. Are you kidding me? They're, they're excited for it. They, they wish me all the luck in the world. And I, I can't tell, well, I couldn't tell people at that time that Chief was uh, what their, their positions were. I couldn't do it. I would love to have been able to say that to somebody, but I've been told to keep quiet because everybody that's been, I'm not a businessman, but I know that if you start spitting that stuff out, that really creates some problems for the, pur the purchasing prices because you and I know that if somebody finds out what you're doing, the price of everything out there is going to go up. Believe me, it will go up. Whoever owns the property they're looking at, I might have said too much now. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'll stop for the moment. So anyway, we still have a motion that, and everybody else wants to speak. By all means, please do. I'd like to make a comment, Mr. Mayor, and, and I appreciate the work that you have done. Uh, I, I can't I sometimes imagine. sometimes wonder that. Well, I do. I well, honestly uh, thank do. You. Um, I, ha I hold no animus towards anybody. Uh, Nor do I. And I appreciate that comment. Um, I, for one, am glad that Chief is considering coming to North Platte. They are a reputable company. Yes, they, are they are a very reputable company, and they have a very good track record. And I guess I look at Chief maybe as being a resolution to our problem with the golf course. Because I think that if we play our cards right, we might be able to roll this whole package all into one and have a resolution to the golf course problem. They'll have properties out there that they can develop and sell and make money on and, and still be able to provide the amenities of golf at the same time. Um, as far as me voting against uh, <coughs> the, the uh, contribution, um, it had nothing to do with the integrity of TIF or the integrity of Chief. It had nothing to do with, with the integrity, with your integrity or, 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 or anyone else's integrity. Uh, I would hope that most of you know that I have a basic philosophical disagreement with government getting involved in subsidizing public or private enterprise. I, I absolutely do not believe that is within the purview of government. Uh, it concerns me that we continue to move down a socialistic model where government becomes more and more important in our lives. I don't think that's good for our, I don't think that's good for, for our country. I don't think it's good for our community and I don't think it's good for our individuals. So I want you to know that my vote no was a philosophical disagreement. It had nothing to do with the integrity of chief or my desire for this community to grow. Uh, I've lived here a long time. Uh, I, I joked at one of the council meetings a while back that uh, I haven't bought a burial plot yet, but maybe maybe I can get a discount on that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the way things are going, maybe somebody will give me one. <laughs> but but uh, no, nonetheless, um, I love this town. This is my home. I have a lot of friends here. I want this town to be successful. And, and I think one of the ways that we can help make our town successful is as a council and as a community. And by community, I don't mean just within the confines of the corporate limits. I'm talking about this whole area <clears throat> that we need to diligently work to reduce government costs so that when people look at North Platte and Lincoln County, they can say, you know, they've got the cheapest taxes out here. I think we ought to move to North Platte because our business costs are going to be lower because we don't have to pay the government so much. That's one of my goals. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll end my contribution with that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I just ask a quick question? Sure. Because it depends on how I'm going to vote on the budget. And, and I want to be supportive of this budget. Can we at least have a commitment to establish a timeline to develop solutions to 
and the solution may be to keep it forever and commit to it. That might be the right solution. Uh, and again, that's why I, I guess, why I keep talking about going to the voters is that, that, that it, I, th I think we're skipping over a decision point is the way I feel about it. But if, if I can just have a commitment that we're going to that we're going to establish a reasonable timeline to, to to solve to come up with the solution to this this issue and try to get this negativity out of our our town's environment then i could feel like i can in good faith for the constituents of my ward vote yes and support this budget here's the million dollar question for everybody it, and it is the golf course it's golf course golf course golf course it's going to be what 180 190,000 we're going to lose this year. Why is it the general population out there upset the rec center or the recreational department or the library Thank that you. we put $1.4 million and we have a payroll at the library of over $700,000? How come nobody's complaining about that? I, I'm just asking. I don't, I'm new at this. But in the recreational part, I know we need that stuff. We need it. But maybe we should be going and looking to see if we can be a little bit more efficient in those areas also. That's all I want to say. So one, libraries are not designed to make any money. I don't know if you're thinking, you know, through library fines. Um, I've, you know, I mean, I sit on the library advisory board as the council liaison, so I get firsthand view of the library and everything they do out there. And they actually have. In recent years, they've had a lot of payroll that's changed because they've hired younger, newer workers as other people have retired out and things like that. Um, the library sits percentage to governmental budget nationally where, it's, where, all, where all the others sit in terms of what they're supposed to spend. The library spends right within where they're supposed to be, at least according to other, you know, with other libraries to other cities and counties and governmental organizations that they are affiliated to. Um, Libraries, I can go back, I guess, to Ed. You know, he talked about, you know, libraries and stuff, too. To me, libraries have an essential function in government, and that essential function is that they are education <coughs> centers. If you are thinking that they are a place where we store a bunch of moth-covered books, then you've missed guests, and I really encourage you to go down there because they keep decreasing their book, their amount of actual hard books there, and they keep increasing their other services that help educate the public on different issues. And we're talking about people who can't necessarily afford um, other forms of education, community colleges, uh, they may have had problems, you know, maybe they only have a high school diploma, whatever. They're coming in there and they're getting help filling out job applications, they're getting help doing all these different things. They're getting help, um, there's a group that comes in and helps out with taxes, um, they have a lot of senior citizens that get that help. They have kids that, you know, this is their chance to learn to read. And let's not forget the amount of homeschool children we have in this town, and it is significant, and they partake in every single one of those programs that the library offers. And those aren't just reading programs, those are also Lego Club where they're doing constructive projects, the creation station where they're critically thinking and developing and being um, ingenuitive of themselves. And to me, it's an education center. So the library, I, I guess maybe they've developed, they've forced me to develop a really soft spot for them. But um, to me, they're an education center. And so yeah, don't take this I, wrong. I, I know. I know. We I'm just, need a library and we I'm need a recreational department. I'm publicly going to just defend the library. Um, and Categorically, you know, we had comments the other night on Tuesday and a couple comments tonight, so I'm going to do that. The rec center, I believe, and you can correct me, their the mission statement originally was, or their operating statement was to operate not to make a profit, correct? It was operate within a certain percentage. Is that right? And that percentage was half? About half of their operating expenses? So if your goal is to get the rec center to shorten up that gap that they have, then let's go ahead and start talking to you know, you know what let's not stop talk, start talking about that yet let's wait until we get these rec center proposals in first i think some of that will clear up some of that in some ways shapes and forms you know we'll have some options to look at then but the rec center you know if that was your goal is to it's got to be in the black dang it then you know what then let's change their let's change their prerogative and they can jack those rates up and you know what none of those kids who don't have anything else to do can go but um 
I think that they do provide a service. We have, a, okay, we have a lot of children and we have a lot of single parents in this town who flat out cannot afford to go out to AMC every night or they can't afford to go do a lot of things. And our parks and our rec center and, uh, and even the library are all contributing. These are leisure services that are contributing to their ability to not sit at home and sit in front of a TV or a video game. It's for them to be able to socialize. It's for them to be able to go out and learn, for them to be able to go out and play. And if you don't think that playing means something to kids and growing up and making them more productive, you know, then I urge you to go talk to the school system about what happens when you take out sports because you know, grades go up. And so I think grades go down if we don't offer those things. And I think that then we're just inhibiting our future generations. So on those pieces there, you know, I mean, we can talk about them, but they have certain reasons why they operate where they operate. And um, so I just wanted to defend them a little bit. And on Iron Eagle, you know, I'm trying to find a solution. I guess that was my idea is let's look to see if there is a partner out there that we can look at. Because I just think that the political toxicity is the problem, not necessarily, like I said, the river, not necessarily a lot of these things. It's just it's just toxic. And any time that anything touches politics to me, it's toxic because government is just, that's just the nature of government. It always has been. It was like that before America was created. And um, I'm, I'm trying to find a solution. And if there's other solutions, I'm willing to listen to them. But for me thinking, if we can find a partner out there that's willing to take it, and we can try to show them you know, that, yeah, it has a chance to probably make it, then that's our fiduciary responsibility to the taxpayer dollars that we spend out there is our responsibility to, to try to get that into the right hands that can make it succeed. And, I just think that that might be the better solution. Question. But we can talk about that later. I thought we came here to pass a budget, not to tear every department in the city Thank apart. You. That's not the reason. We can have discussion, but let's limit it a little bit. Hell, we'll be here at 11 o'clock again tonight. Yes. I've already eaten, so I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> Jim? I hope this is the final comment. <laughs> right. we to well, y'all keep going. I may have some more comments. Okay. No, go ahead. Uh, what I don't hear a lot of us talk about is what our citizens expect of us, our taxpayers expect of us. Taxpayers in my war didn't send me here to perpetuate the status quo. They sent me here to try to do a more responsible job of handling their money, not my money, their money. So I'm going to keep doing that. Thank you. You know, there's a couple of other things, too, that we can't control. And Jim can tell you, what does it cost us? Just the increases we get in health insurance. Yes. We've got to have it. But how do you control stuff like that? You can't. And it's, it was huge. Well, that's pretty much our entire city budget increase this year. Yeah, that's the majority of it. That's so, damn insurance company. Let's move on. If if I could make one, sorry, Jim, one one final comment um, regarding elections. I'm not I'm not making any comment about voting for the golf course or not voting for the golf course. But one of the one of the beauties of our country is that we have the right to be involved in our government. And if we run away from that because we're afraid that the voter may do something that we don't like, uh, that concerns me a great deal because uh, that's one of the beauties of the United States of America is that we operate at, at the will of the people, maybe not directly in some cases especially, but, but indirectly we're all here because somebody in, in our constituency group wanted us here. And so I, for one, think elections are wonderful. Um, I would hate to be in a country where uh, we received an edict on high that uh, you're going to send 88% of your income to the government and they're going to dictate how it gets spent. And so to, to limit uh, the public's involvement, I think, is a kind of a a concern, and I, I don't think that's probably the road you were going down, Jim, but no, no. it is a concern. So just. My, my concern was like the other night. How many times did we hear the same thing said 
by another person and then another person comes back and says the same thing again and then another person the same thing again if it's been said once or twice that should be enough that should be enough what i hear there glenn is that's a reflection of the dis uh, uh of of the of the um, uh, of the public and their concern and their 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 sense that they're not being heard okay whatever Call the question. Uh, call the question. Yes, please. Now, we what are we voting on? <laughs> We're voting on budget as amended. As amended. As amended. Motion passes. All right. Item number three, action to adopt resolution setting the property tax rate for fiscal year 2019 and 2020. Move that we adopt resolution setting the property tax rate for fiscal year 2019-2020. passes as well mr. mr. mayor yes sir uh, sometime there was one thing that I'd like to make a resolution as far as a stipulation for the for the the city to provide the council uh, an accounting of the golf course when's the proper time to do that um, no, it certainly is the seat in that, but I'll, I'll visit with you maybe some set up. okay And item number four, approve joint motion, stipulation, and consent order and authorize mayor to execute any in settlement documents to settle lawsuit on file in Lancaster County District Court against League of Association of Risk Management. And Doug, I'm assuming you all probably want to know what this is about. Yeah. <laughs> Doug, if you can help me out. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of legs uh, on this animal. Um, yes. Uh, you may recall there were three lawsuits on file in Lancaster County, um, and I'll try to be concise. Three lawsuits on file in Lancaster County, uh, all relating to the League Association of Risk Management, our insurance carrier. Uh, the first lawsuit challenged the validity of the then uh, purported board of directors. After that lawsuit was filed, a second lawsuit was filed challenging some of the actions that that board had taken and then yet another lawsuit was filed challenging a second board that had um, uh, arguably um, been validly elected so the three lawsuits the first uh, primary most important lawsuit uh, was i think i referred to it as a quo waranto case it challenged the validity of the then sitting board of directors uh, the judge rendered a decision a couple of weeks ago determining that that board was in fact not a valid board. We were one of the uh, parties plaintiff to that lawsuit. Uh, we were successful uh, in uh, helping uh, the court determine that the then sitting board was not a proper board and they were ousted from their positions. As a result of that lawsuit um, being successfully uh, or determined successfully in the city's favor, uh, that board uh, uh, was ousted as a consequence uh, that left uh, two lawsuits on file uh, what you have in front of you is an attempt to settle one of the other lawsuits uh, make it go away by wiping the slate uh, clean saying uh, you guys win uh, we won't appeal if you don't come after us and that's what uh, the stipulation in front of you says um, and that will cut the litigation by uh, an estimated year and a half on that lawsuit it'll go away uh, the third lawsuit um, the new board that uh, will take uh, um, control uh, will be in a position to dismiss that lawsuit so this will largely eliminate all of the lawsuits that were on file in Lancaster County Court 
I'd be happy to try to answer any questions that you might have. Doug, I want to know, did the director who got started this thing, has he submitted his resignation yet? He... Or is he gone? He, the um, administer, administrator for the League of Association of Risk Management has recommended to the board that his employment be terminated. Uh, he's asked for a due process hearing. That's being scheduled, uh, and, and so that's in the works. His his job is um, in limbo right now. He, uh, he's subject to being terminated uh, if uh, the board determines that he should. This litigation costs the considerable a lot of money, and I don't think the man should stay in stay in that position. There are a lot of that. people that would agree I with. Wish you. we could go after him and, and get some recovery, but. <coughs> I move that we approve the joint motion stipulation and consent order and authorize the mayor to execute any settlement documents or documents to settle a lawsuit on file in Lancaster County District Court against League Association of Risk Management. Second. And that motion passes as well. Yes, sir. Is there any chance, and I'm suggesting this to you, Laura, that we as a council could just get together for one day, a weekend, or whenever, and just have a retreat? A retreat type of thing and discuss a lot of these things? There's nothing that says we can't do that. I think it would be very bad. But you have to also understand the Open Meetings Act as well. I think that's a good idea. Anyone anyone wish to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Thank you.